Man, I woke up the other day, I thought to myself, the world done lost its damn mind. Hey, what's up, y'all? This is Carlton Cullens here in South Austin, Texas, and welcome to the very first episode of Mixtape Gumbo. And I want to thank you for stopping by. I want to thank you for listening. Do me one more favor. Tell somebody. It's it's a very strange thing, man, putting myself out here like this. It's I'm sure all of you understand what I'm talking about. If you've ever asked anybody out on a date, you ever tried to get a job, you've ever tried to ask for help, Talk to strangers, man. Talk to a group of strangers who don't know you, don't care about you. It's a funny thing, man, putting yourself out there because you just don't know what you're going to get. And I, myself, and I'm sure a lot of you too, we have a lot of fears about the unknown. A lot of fears. Especially putting yourself out there because, man, you just don't know if you're going to fall, you're going to trip, you're going to embarrass yourself, you're going to fall on your face, you're going to get hurt, or you're just going to get the haters. You know, the world is overflowing with haters. And like Cat Williams said... The haters' job is to hate. So if they're doing it, they're just doing their job. It's just like a character on a sitcom that's a real asshole. You know, just that's their job. That's their character. That's what they do. Maybe one day they'll see the light. But in the meantime, man, if we worry about all the fears that we have about not doing stuff, we just won't do anything. And that was what I was turning into me for doing this podcast, something as simple as this. But really, man, in anything in life that you want to do, big or small, you know, short term or long term, Man, I want to tell everybody out there, don't don't be afraid. Don't put it off forever. Life is short, and you can do ultimately a lot of things, almost anything you want to, almost, you know? And if you have a plan and you can get over fear, you can get to those a lot faster. And, man, the more you do things that you enjoy, things that you're passionate about, things that you like, things that you look forward to, the happier you'll be. The happier you are, it just spreads all around you like an infectious cool breeze blowing in October, man. It's just like you want to be the light that everybody sees. So the whole spirit of this first episode is about commonality. Because I swear, I woke up I woke up the other day and I thought to myself, the world done lost its damn mind. It's like, and I've, I've come to that conclusion a lot lately, a lot the last few years, probably most of my life. But man, it just seems like it's gotten real bad lately. It's crazy. And it's probably not going to change anytime soon. And I'm never going to, I never really want to use this show to talk about things that are really polarizing that piss people off and get everybody fighting each other. You know, politics, religion, race, stuff like that. And I don't ever want, in this first episode, I want to let everybody know I don't want you to think that I'm not human and that I don't have strong feelings about that stuff because I do. And I'm sure you do too. We all do. We're all supposed to have feelings, we're supposed to have opinions. But I'm old school. I think opinions, for the most part, should be kept to ourselves, you know? I don't, you know, I feel the way I do, and I'm, you feel the way you do. I don't want to change your feeling. If you feel good about that, hey, roll with that. I'm going to roll with it, too. We've got to remember that we're going to have differences, man. I have, I mean, things are so polarized right now. The whole, it seems like in America, particularly in the nation, everybody's just pissed off at each other, fighting each other and stuff like that. It is not good vibes, man. And if I'm not careful, I'll get caught up in it. But I really try to keep that at, at arm's length. But, man, remember that we all have more in common than not. It really, it's hard to remember that. And there's a lot of people out there that it's it makes that really difficult to come to that conclusion. But, man, Maya Angelou had a, a great poem years ago. And she had a, a great little line in it that they actually used in an Apple commercial a few years ago. But she said that we are more alike than unalike, my friends. And... Man, I hear that ringing in my head. I try to remember it often because, when, you know, when you get upset, man, it just, it ruins everything, man. I'm telling you, this is kind of how I view the world and how I view haters and negativity and all that. And trust me, I'm human too. I, I have feelings just like everybody else, man. But the way that I see negativity is I think about the end game. Where is the end to negativity? Does it, is it productive? Is it going to take me anywhere that I really want to go long term or short term, short term? And the answer to me in my mind is always no. There is no end game for negativity and hate. There really isn't. And it doesn't mean that I don't get pissed off or you don't get pissed off. But I'm just telling you to remind everybody, look, just there, there is no end game and 
just this in stuff, it, it just, it has no place. It, it goes nowhere. So don't get caught up in it, man. Stay positive. Keep your sense of humor about it and keep your opinions to yourself. I think that helps a lot of people from conflicting, man. I've got good friends that I've been friends with a long time, people that I grew up with, family members, man. And we think differently, man. If we start talking about all our differences, we're just going to put a big old wall between us like it's, it's growing. And I don't want to see that no more, and I hope that you don't either. Man, we all have more in common with each other. And the whole world, I'm hoping one day, maybe not in our lifetime, but eventually is going to figure out that if we work together, work a lot harder, smarter together, we could ultimately, we could get anything done. But uh, anyway, that's, that's, that's that, and uh, let's move on. You know, with all the stuff out there in the world that we may not like, I still feel like it's a great time to be alive. I really work hard to choose to see the positive, the potential. I think it's all there. I mean, bad things are going to happen, but there's so much, so much potential right now. And I think it's important for all of us to stay focused on that and not be distracted. What I want to talk about now is something I constantly have to keep myself in check with because it's easy to do. Everything, some days, most days, maybe, it just seems like with all the stuff going on in the world that some days it's just, it seems like it's a bit too much, way too much sometimes, oversaturation. It just seems like it's so easy to get distracted now. Everything pulling at us like, you know, got a hook with some bait on it and just pulling us, pulling us this way, pulling us that way. It's so easy to get distracted, to forget about the things that are simple things that are important, things that we have in common. But I definitely, when, you know, when I feel overwhelmed, bombarded, everything seems a little bit crazy, I definitely realize that it's important to remember how the senses work. We have five major senses, maybe more, maybe six, maybe seven, but we'll stick with five for now. Five's good. Uh, you know, we've got our sense of touch. We've got our sense of taste, our sense of vision. We've got our smell. And we've got hearing and sound, all incredibly powerful senses. That This is basically how we experience the world. And it's a beautiful thing through our senses. You know, the sixth sense, that the kind of the mind's eye, the, uh, you know, our intuition, really important too. I think that one's one that's important for survival. And because we're not really in survival mode most of the time, we don't have to pay attention to that. But we've got all these things that communicate to our brains in order to either make our lives better, make our lives more stressed, survive, or thrive. All different kind of concepts. But, man, each day I kind of evaluate things, man. You know, if you've got a smartphone and you're connected and, and messing around with social media on a regular basis, it gets overwhelming. I did a little thing uh, the last year and a half or so, I just kind of like, I got off Facebook. I, I was getting off a lot of things. Not if I did get on, it wasn't very often, but just trying to limit my exposure and time on there, man, I had so much more free time. My mood was better. Everything was so much better. I'm not saying that's a, that I'm suggesting that for everybody, but you know, if you ever feel like overwhelmed, I want you to pay attention to which senses are getting bombarded. Obviously, say in your phone and you're messing around with social media and you're looking at things that are, that are, you know, that, that aren't making you feel good, limit those. Either limit them in your feed, put your phone away, try something else, but realize that the vision, when you look at your phone, you're, you're using your vision. You're also using your mind's eye. That's why I like to talk about that sixth sense because it's something that's a little bit abstract. We don't exactly know what it is, but I know that when I feel overwhelmed, it's something in my emotions, my spirit, my brain, and it carries over into my body. So it's very disruptive. So Everything when you're feeling overwhelmed, pay attention to which senses are getting overwhelmed and which senses maybe you could use better to make your day better, to make your life better, to make it more fun, more relaxing, to counterbalance that craziness. We need to do things that calm us down. It's like yin and yang, hot, cold, night, day, all those, those 
you know, those, those just opposites are really important. So, you know, particularly, like I said, cell phone, you're looking at your stuff, man, it's a lot of your vision, your, your mind's getting attacked, everything gets overwhelmed. I'm a huge fan of sound, of music. Uh, I mean, you're listening to this podcast, obviously. The sound is incredible. If you lost that one sense, your world changes. Other senses have to make up for that lost sense. But but sound is incredibly powerful. And most of you out there probably listen to music. Uh, and never underestimate the power of music. A lot of you probably have something you listen to every day in your earphones or in your car or whatever. But when, when the world gets overwhelmed, maybe take a chill break. Close your eyes so you're not using that senses. Use your hearing. Put some music in or something, some kind of sound that soothes you. It might be outdoors in nature, birds chirping, whatever it is. Use those senses that aren't being used that you could use better to calm you. Man, it's an instant free way to make your day better. I often try to do that. I try to attack all my senses with beautiful things. Even in like, say something like Instagram, man, I follow predominantly positive stuff, funny stuff, inspirational stuff, and beautiful stuff. I love following National Geographic photographers because I love nature. I like looking at things on a normal basis. I don't want to hear about politics on a normal basis or who killed who. That stuff instantly is a buzzkill, man. It brings you down. It ain't doing nothing no good for nobody. So, man, one thing to try this week is to practice and think about which senses are getting overwhelmed. Try to limit those. Find which senses aren't being used and that, that you could use better to make your day better and focus on those. That's a, I think it's a, it's a great thing to do. And, uh, man, just, just give it a shot. All right. In the words of Bernie Mac, let's move on. Some of y'all out there listening that you may actually know me or you know that I, I work as a personal trainer. You may not know anything about me at all, uh, but I should probably say a little bit about this. Uh, I work as a personal trainer. I have for many years. I still do. I love it. It's an important, a very important part of my life. Uh, a lot of people that know me, uh, that are close to me, were kind of curious why I'm not doing a podcast centered around health and fitness. Uh, there's probably a lot of reasons why I'm not. Uh, there's a lot out there already. I think in general, the subject can be a little, a little boring. It gets really technical when you want to get down to it. And the thing that probably bothers me most about fitness and the fitness industry and, 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 uh, and all that right now is the fact that we've made things too complicated. We talk too much about the small things. We don't step back and look at it as a, in a more general, per, you know, perspective, uh, I've been doing this a long time. It's a very important part of my life. I always mention the words health and fitness because they're not the same thing. They're very much not the same thing. Uh, you know, health is the foundation that everything is built on, including fitness. We focus a lot, particularly in America, and I think just all over the world now, I think we focus so much on this fitness stuff and aesthetic stuff and not that it's important. And there's a lot, a lot of that you can talk about with all that stuff, but in my opinion, all fitness things related should be built on the foundation of health. And health is taking care of your mind, your body, your heart, your soul. And then you add fitness to that. You don't sacrifice your health for fitness gains. A lot of people do. And there's a lot of people, say, who play sports or have a job where they, they need to use their body. They're training for these things, these ends. And, uh, and, you know, and when you do these things, naturally there's an understanding that you are going to sacrifice your body and possibly your mind and your health in order to get these fitness gains. Uh, and that's just what it is. It's going to do some long-term damage potentially. I am more focused on the health end, taking care of our bodies, our minds, again, our heart and soul, it all goes together and taking care of things for the long term, for longevity. I want to feel good 
if I end up living to be 115, I want to feel as good as I can then. I don't want to wear everything out before then. And if you get really into fitness or if you're not into fitness at all and you're just living an unhealthy lifestyle, uh, you can destroy all things health. And unfortunately, a lot of people they get so involved in fitness and it's great. It's better than committing crimes and doing heroin and all that kind of stuff. But it can easily turn into things that are are not healthy for your mind, body, heart, and soul. And me working in the industry for almost 15 years, I've seen a lot of that. And I definitely want to go out on the limb and say that you don't have to do that. I tell most of the people close to me that <clears throat> this is the way that I look in health and fitness. And this is a way that I would recommend anybody to look at it is I... I breathe every day, I sleep every day, I have to eat food. These are things that I do. I don't talk about them a lot. We all understand that we need to do these things and we do them kind of automatically. The way that I look at health and even the fitness and exercise that I do, and I'm doing stuff almost every day, I don't obsess over it, I don't overthink it, I keep it really simple, but it's a part of my day just like sleeping and eating and all that stuff. It's, it's just like that. I don't look at it any different. When you look at it like that, and it may take a long time to learn to see it that way, it's not a big deal. I get it done because it needs to get done. And that way it's easy for me to take care of myself. I don't do too much. I don't do too little. I always try to find the middle. I, 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 you know, I'm not going to talk about a lot of specific things in health and fitness, but I do want to mention things on each of these episodes, uh, the things that I think are beneficial. And that mindset is really, really important. And I want to, it kind of fits into this overall theme of this episode of commonality, things that should be normal. I definitely recommend that. It's one of those things you think of it like a permanent thing, not a temporary thing. It's something that's evergreen and it's not something that's just seasonal, you know? It becomes the new norm. I want to thank everybody for listening. Seriously, thank you. I know you didn't have to be here, but you're here. You stay to the end. Thank you. Please come back. I want to end this with a simple haiku. It goes like this. The glass is empty. Vision extends beyond eyes. Overflowing now. <laughs>